The Soviet Voshgod program was created to break several firsts, even if it meant risking the lives of its crew. Voshgod 1's mission was to launch three men into space aboard a tiny pod where they barely had any room to move. The cosmonauts even had to undergo a rigorous diet to fit into the capsule. The men were carefully picked to fulfill the political demands of the USSR officials. They would be part of the first spacecraft mission to carry more than one man into space. The mission would put the USSR one step closer to winning the space race against the Americans. But there was a catch. The spacecraft did not have ejection seats in case anything went wrong after the launch. Even worse, they would travel into orbit without spacesuits to save even more weight. Putting humans into space. Vostok was the Soviet Union's first human spaceflight program. It ran from 1960 to 1963 with great success. The program put the first man into space with its first launch, and more impressive for its time, the first woman as well. Valentina Tereshkova rose to fame after flying to space aboard the Vostok 6. Along with Yuri Gagarin, both became icons of the Soviet space program. The achievements of Vostok's solar missions put the USSR ahead of the US during the first years of the race to conquer space. Sergei Korolev, the mastermind behind the entire spaceflight program, made several modifications to the Vostok spacecraft to improve their functionality in outer space missions. He even contemplated new designs that could take two cosmonauts into space. However, his extended Vostok missions planned for 1964 were cancelled. The next generation Soyuz program was put on hold because of the Americans catching up with their own space programs. The Soviets decided it was time to move forward with a more ambitious project. At the time, the US was about to launch its second space program, Gemini, which aimed to put two men into space. Its predecessor, Project Mercury, had launched alongside Vostok and successfully sent a one-man crew into orbit. Project Gemini threatened to overshadow the USSR's previous achievements. Premier Nikita Khrushchev was unwilling to cede so easily and asked Sergei Korolev to develop a new program. Khrushchev's proposal was simple. If the Americans could put two men into space, the USSR would send three or more. By February 1964, it was decided that Sergei Korolev would modify the existing Vostoks so that they could carry three men. The Vostok project now transitioned into the Voshkod program. The Voshkod program. Historian Asif A. Siddiqui from the NASA History Division wrote in his book Challenge to Apollo, quote, If the publicity machine in the USSR worked as well as it had in previous years, no one would guess that the Voshkod spacecraft was simply a modified Voshdok packed with three cosmonauts. Soviet officials discussed the new Voshkod program at a military industrial commission meeting on March 13, 1964. Chairman Leonid Smirnov signed Decree No. 59 later that day. It called for the creation of four three-seat spaceships based on the Vostok. The first piloted launch was scheduled for August 1964. In April 1964, the Central Committee of the Communist Party and the USSR Council of Ministers officially approved the Voshkod, or Sunrise, program, allowing Korolev to use more funds for the project. Additionally, Korolev was to develop two new spacecraft called Vikod, or Exit, that would be used for an extravehicular activity mission to complement the Voshkod program. The program would be divided into two phases. The first one would begin with the launch of a dog into Earth's orbit to test each of the two models. The second one would be the launch with the actual crew. But as NASA was preparing its own extravehicular activity mission, the first plan was scrapped and in-flight testing with animals was postponed. Sergei Korolev had just a few months to deliver the prototypes. Soviet engineers thought the goal was impossible to achieve with the standard safety and scientific procedures that could guarantee a successful spacecraft. Many scientists vocalized their frustration, claiming that the project felt extremely hurried and would risk cosmonauts' lives for an enterprise whose main objective was propaganda. But the program went on, trusting that the genius of Sergei Korolev would deliver. The honor and prestige of the USSR depended on it. The Voshkod 1.
a group of 50 engineers was chosen to modify the Vostok spacecraft into the three-seat Voshkod. At first, Sergei Korolev's staff was opposed to the idea. Konstantin P. Fertistov, one of his most valuable engineers, later wrote, quote, He argued that it would be unsafe, that it would be better to be patient and wait for the Soyuz spaceship to be built. He said that if we could build a ship based on the Vostok design, which could carry three people, then one of those places would be offered to an OKB-1 engineer. Well, that was a very seductive offer, and a few days later, we produced some rough sketches. Our first ideas were accepted. The original Vostok had a tiny cabin that only measured 2.5 meters in diameter and only had a single seat. To accommodate three men, Feoktistov suggested removing the original bulky ejection seat. Feoktistov also noted that it was impossible to fit three men into such a reduced space while wearing cosmonaut suits. They would have to wear regular clothing. These ideas undoubtedly compromised the men's safety, but it was the only way the spacecraft could fit all of them. Korolev agreed, and three crew couches were added. Some internal systems had to be modified as well, including additional attitude control systems and improved TV and radio systems. A solid fuel braking rocket was added to the space capsule's parachute lines to counter the crew's lack of safety systems. This would decrease velocity before landing, resulting in a softer touchdown. A secondary backup retro rocket engine was added to ensure the survivability of the crew if things went sideways. Author of the book Russia in Space, Anatoly Zak, wrote, quote, Voshkod's planned orbit was still kept at 180 to 185 kilometers at the lowest point. As a result, the spacecraft could naturally plunge back to Earth due to the atmospheric friction near its perigree within just three days, in case both of its braking engines would fail. However, further mass savings were still required, forcing engineers to cut the Voshkod's life support capabilities to just two days. As a result, the crew could no longer survive in orbit until the natural decay of their capsule after a possible braking engine failure. Crew selection for the Voshkod 1 program was a complicated process from the beginning. Every Soviet branch wanted to take part in the launch. In the end, it was decided that the crew would be composed of a cosmonaut, a doctor, and a scientist. A series of candidates were considered for each position. Korolev himself appointed Fertistov as the scientist, while the Air Force chose pilot Vladimir Komarov and Dr. Boris Yegorov. The three-man crew barely had three months to prepare, but they were ready to make history by the time of the launch. A political launch. On October 12, 1964, the Voskhod was launched into orbit from the Baikonur Cosmodrome. At 8.30, radio announcer Yuri Levitan said, quote, The Soviet Union today launched the world's first passenger spaceship with three men aboard. The mission went flawlessly. On the second orbit, the crew greeted the Olympic Games as the Voskhod passed near Japan at 9 o'clock. During their 24 hours in space, the crew conducted brief physiotechnical and biological tests and took hundreds of photos of the Earth. The Voskhod had achieved its purpose. The event was transmitted worldwide, and it put the USSR ahead in the space race before the US could launch Project Gemini. NASA Administrator James E. Webb called the Voskhod mission, quote, a significant space accomplishment, a clear indication that the Russians are continuing a large space program for the achievement of national power and prestige. At 1400 hours, the three-man crew received a call from Soviet leader Nikita Khrushchev, who reportedly told them that, quote, Anastas Mikoyan is standing next to me and is eager to take the telephone receiver from me. Hours later, Khrushchev was removed from his position as the leader of the USSR. A plot to oust him had been led by Leonid Brezhnev and a circle of Soviet officials, including Mikoyan. While vacationing in Crimea, Khrushchev was informed of the coup hours before the Voskhod crew arrived in Kostanai, Kazakhstan. According to author Anatoly Zak, Feoktistov would later write in his memoirs, quote, Naive Khrushchev forgot that a dictator could not afford to relax his grip over the police, army, and his associates, even for a minute. After the hard landing, the crew was greeted by new leader Brezhnev in a parade at the Red Square. The Soviet Union had beaten the United States once again, and the population was in awe, unaware that behind the scenes, the Soviet leaders were reportedly calling the launch a space circus. <laughs> 